Could you call Freddy again? She's going to be late. Yeah, so Freddy! Freddy, hurry up, you're going to be oh, late. Oh, God! Oh, well done. Where's Freddy? Is she coming? That was a kitten. Well, it better not have been. Now, you know the drill. First sign of a wheeze, you tell the teacher and she can phone us. See you later. Who's a smart girl, then? With a new uniform. Are you belted there? Wait till up. Bye. Bye. It's good that she's well enough to go back to school, isn't it? Yes, I think so, Stanley. You didn't like King Alfred, then? Well, it wasn't really a question of liking. I just, I just felt she'd be better off at Home Grove Park. King Alfred's a dump. Didn't do you no harm, Martin. Didn't do me no good, neither. No, Freddie's not going back to King Alfred's because her father thinks that it's too big for her. He's, he's afraid she may not be able to cope. Oh, yeah. I think if he can afford to send his kids private, then. Do you believe in the private sector, then, Martin? I just think, if he can afford it, then good luck to you. We can't. This is why we may have to make a few economies. I hope that don't include us. <laughs> <laughs> You all right, Coco? You're looking a bit pale. I'm fine, Darren. We're going to be late. Look, if you don't feel up to it. I'm looking forward to it. No, you're not. Yes, I am. You remember to take your inhaler? I said... You heard, Darren. It's OK. I didn't hear a reply. Look, the whole point about taking your inhaler... I know what the point of my inhaler is, Dad. I'm not knocking Lady Pat. Lady Pat's brilliant. I wouldn't be going to school if she wasn't. Yes, you would. You were only going to school because... What? You're only going to school because of what? Look, nobody's going anywhere unless they tell me. I mean it. Mum said Freddie couldn't go on riding if she didn't go to school. She's well enough to go to school. I couldn't understand why she was so willing. Of course she was willing. She wants to go to school. She's tired of sitting around. I've said all along that Freddie's... I'm sure that shouldn't be flying that low. Scaring the birds. Why don't they leave us alone?
sorry, Dad. What's your cuckoo? This is Mandy. I said we give her a lift. Hello, Mandy. Hello. All right? I've been swimming. Oh, you didn't have a costume. They lent me on. I did ten lands. Hello, Mandy. That's Tom, isn't it? He's, he's not noted for his dental hygiene. Oh. That's it. Through the gate. It's covered in barbed wire, Dad. Barbed wire? Well, it can't be. This is a right of way. Well, maybe there's a gap back there. Well, according to the map, we should be able to get through here, right through the woods and to the road. It's, it's a bridle way, an old coach road. Hello. Hello. Are you trying to get through? Well, trying's the operative word. <laughs> well, there's a gap in the hedge down there. Oh. What, this way? Yes, I'll show you. Oh, sorry. Hello. Thanks. Hello. I haven't had time to open all the gateways up. I'm afraid to find the next two blocks and wide as well. Well, you, you haven't been here long, then? No, not long, no. You know, I didn't realise this was the old coach road until we had the first ramblers in the spring. Mm. Shabby here before me, a farmer. <laughs> Didn't go much on right to where, I'm afraid. No. No, they don't, as a rule. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> this this is all yours, is it? Yes, the path goes straight through my woodlands. I go as far as the field below and up to the lane. Hmm. Ah, it's, it's a lovely spot, isn't it? Ideal. Ah, let me help there. These woods are wonderful. Don't worry, it'll all be cleared soon. Here you go, my lovey. Mind the wire. Won't hurt you. Thanks. Oh, Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Never had a headache before. Not until we moved down here. I mean, I, I had self-induced headaches from drinking too much wine or or from the sun, but this isn't self-induced. You're using a lot of salt. No. I've never eaten much salt. I'm not a salty sort of person. You're eating more salt now. Do you feel the need for more salt? Yes. Good. Good. I thought salt was bad for you. What sort of a patient are you? Are you irritable? hate being fussed over. I'm not a good patient, no. I know what nurses are like. Now, these headaches, they're worse between 10 in the morning and mid-afternoon. No. How about your eyes? Is your sight affected? My, my eyes hurt, but it's not migraine because these these headaches are all over. Not just down one side. No, they're general. And they go right down into my neck. If it's an allergy, it can't be food because I've run an exclusion test. Have you stopped drinking coffee? Yes. And tea and wine. Oh, no, I've always been very careful about additives. Have you eaten anything new? No. And the ten minutes is up. Now, you're to take three of these infusions. I do. A day. I am, I am. Three ounces of rosemary in boiling water. 
Just like you said. Are you still taking the Bryonia? Yes. Then you ought to go and see the dog. If we can't shift this wretched thing between us, you ought to see the M.O. at but... once. But... Can't muck about with headaches. Well, what on earth do you think is the matter with me? I don't actually know. I told you it wasn't anything serious. You were the one who thought it might be a tumour? Yes. So, did they have any idea what might be causing the headaches? Stress. Stress? No, they were certain of it. Stress or PMT. <laughs> well, Tom's could hardly be PMT. No, they said his was caused by too much sun. Is that possible? explain the mouth ulcers. He's still got mouth ulcers. No, I think it's something more local. It won't hurt you, Jack. Afternoon, John. Oh. Uh, Gates. Jack. You're a man of many parts, John. Mm, you should have seen him when I bought him. Held together with bailing twine he was. Well, what there was of him. Being used as a donor for a store in another car. There's about a thousand hours here, at least. 1,250, Jack. Where do you find the time? I thought you farmers never had a minute to yourself. No, you don't. If we be married. <laughs> you don't need me to sell this for you, John. <laughs> I do. You'll get the right price. Hey, you just found a nice uh, pre-war Riley. I want to go up next. What do you think it's worth? Well, I built the body, you know. There weren't no body on him. The materials alone cost me 450 pounds. I don't know. Uh, must be able to get uh, two and a half, three thousand for him. You're right. You do need me to sell it for you. What, is, is that too much? Not enough, John. About nine times not enough.
Yes, you did. You certainly did. Guess what? I got my badge. Oh, Fred, that's wonderful. I'll sew it on for you tonight. How far did you have to swim? A mile. A mile? It is, Harriet. Acid rain. No, Fred, I don't think it's acid rain. Right, then. How is she? Well, I've given her a sedative, so she should sleep through to the morning. Has she said anything yet, Phil? I think it's still a little early. For such a, an ardent gardener, the shock must have been terrible. Do you think I did the right thing, bringing her back here? Oh, I think you did entirely the right thing. Thank heavens you found her. A trauma like that, she might just have sat out there all night. Yes, sir. Apparently what happened was Lady Brule came out into her garden uh, in the morning. Brule? B-R-O-O-L? No, B-R-O-U-G-H-A-L-L. -L. Uh -huh. Yes, she came out into her garden first thing in the morning, as she always did, and found all this damage. And you found her? Oh, right. well, around about tea time, I suppose. I... Uh, sorry, here comes Kenneth. Ah. Sorry if I'm a little late. It's been that sort of a morning. Yeah. Wrong church, wrong funeral. Now then, this is the... Uh, Dead garden feature, right? Uh, yes, I suppose you can call it. Jolly good. Right then. Right then, Lady Brown, if uh, we could... Uh... No, no, it's not Brown. It, it, it's Brule, and I'm not her. I'm a friend of hers, Harriet Bolt. Yes. Well, I always uh, leave the names and uh, arrangements to young Frank here. Don't, Frank. Otherwise, I don't know where I am. So, if we could uh, have you uh, up against that tree, perhaps, would be nice. 
Yes. Lovely. He looks uh, really nice and dead. What was he when he was at home? An apple? An old pear? Uh, no, it's a mountain ash, actually. Jolly good. Now, if you could uh, look up at the tree. That's it. Uh, a bit more upset, please. Nice and sad. Lovely. Sadder. More tragic, if you can. After all, you have lost our lovely old apple tree. If you could uh, point to the tree, perhaps. That's it. Sadder still, please. Tragic as you can make it. Lovely. Very nice. Lovely. Lovely. A poisonous cloud has decimated a famous Somerset garden. Lady Patricia Brule will... It looks as though someone has taken a flame gun to it, said a friend of hers, Mrs Harriet Bolt, pictured above. Well, the trees come out well. Although, to my mind, it's much more likely a cloud of poison has drifted from some neighbouring farmer's field. Now, that's not exactly what I said. Yeah, well, is it, is it ever? We've already made some initial inquiries, Mrs. Bolt continues. Uh, although it has yet to be confirmed, it seems the damage quite definitely was caused by vapour drift from calibre 90, the most commonly used chemical. Obviously, this is a delicate subject in a heavily farm oriented community. I'll say. Obviously, I time a stand was taken against indiscriminate spraying. You don't know nothing about that it. Mrs. Bolt should keep her mouth shut. Farmer's spokesman said on Monday, farmers followed a code of practice on crop spraying, and spraying from the air is subject to the strict control of the 1986 Pesticides Act. Them pilots won't come out if there's any wind to speak of. The only recorded incidents have occurred during very hot weather when the sprayed chemical vaporises and then travel high in the atmosphere and not descend again for several days. We'll find any excuse to blame us. Farmers are generally very careful, the spokesman said, and the aerial spraying companies have the highest possible standards. I'd say that lady's got a point. You just keep your nose out, John Hasty. Us farmers is meant to stick together like. How can I stick together like if I have to keep my nose out? <laughs> because you ain't a proper farmer no more, John. That's why. Because you've gone bloody organic. No, he just said he'd seen your newspaper article and would we call him? I think you'll find an ally in Leslie Norman. He's even more upset about the whole thing than you are. Maybe his place has been affected too. All right. No, I've been feeling a bit rough all week. Freddy's the only one who seems okay. Are you 
should have said. I thought it was the beginning of a summer cold. Dr Norris said it was a summer cold. Headache, sore throat and ulcers in the mouth is not a summer cold, Jack. It's chemicals. Or, more specifically, Caliban 90. I'm serious, Jack. We're being poisoned. It's not possible. I don't know how many are affected. Might be one or two. It could conceivably be the lot. According to a forester I was talking to, once the leaves get like this, they've had it. I, I know where we are now. That's Lady Pat's down there. And your house is, is just above us. How is Lady Pat, by the way? She's fine. Yeah, she's practically fully recovered. Must have been a terrible shock. Yeah, it was. Round here, they say, she's a bit of a witch. She's not a witch. She's a healer. Uh-huh. But unfortunately, I don't think her therapy extends to trees. See, they don't have to eat the poison direct. Oh, they eat something that's already been poisoned. Like a mouse or a rat or anything. A mole, a field mouse. Bert, the gardener up at the house, he found him. He thought he was dead. It's touch and go whether he'll survive. Depends how much of the poison's got into his system. He was very weak. Careful, Tom. Mind you don't slip. Landlay above his. But well, you're suggesting the spray could have drifted from here? Why not? It's a possibility. Or from this land, west of Lady Pat's. No, that's that's all part of the same farm. Anyway, it couldn't have drifted from here. This is John Hasty's land. He doesn't use chemicals. He farms totally organically. Oh, of course he does. That's how it should be. The sedge isn't quite withered from the lake. <laughs> Not yet. Well, then, if it wasn't John, the spray must have gone up in a vortex. Well, that's the most likely. Yeah. Or maybe the pilot dumped it. What did he I don't think so. No, I mean, not toxic stuff like that. It's not like jettisoning fuel. Well, then, the only other possibility is that somebody did it deliberately. Ted, a friendly neighboring farmer.
Yes? Even Mrs. Hubbard. I'd like a word with Ted. Having his tea. This won't take a minute. <laughs> I was wondering if I could enlist your help, Ted, to pull me out of the ditch. You gone in the ditch, Abby? That's right. Perhaps you didn't realize it, but you forced me off the road. No, I never. I've got to get out of the ditch, Ted. Local garage does a breakdown service. It would only take a couple of minutes with your tractor. Oh, well, I'd like to help you, Jack. But I'd be busy this evening. Crop spraying. Yeah, but that's that's a good ten miles from where the damage was done. According to your log, what wind there was that day was a southwesterly prevailing wind, which would have carried any drift in the opposite direction. There'd be no chance of any noticeable drift, sir. We never spray when the wind's over a certain speed. And anyway, the fungicides we use would never do the sort of damage you're describing. But you do use caliber 90. Well, that's what the farmers supply us with, yes. We don't order it ourselves. According to Caliban's records, on the 26th of last month, you bought, well, somebody did from this office, five litre cans, two five litre cans of Caliban. Me? I never ordered it. And why two five litre cans? That's barely enough for 30 acres. They were also asked to deliver 24 cans of Paraquat. Paraquat? That would do the damage you're talking about. We would never use something as vicious as that. But I was the only one here on the 26th. Apart from Ken, that is. He's one of our pilots. Correction was one of our pilots. He left. Suddenly up sticks and took this job abroad. In Abu Dhabi. I remember this one. Wasn't that meadow some kind of beauty spot? Yes, somewhere in East Sussex. Yes, full of wild plants. Yes, that's right. The whole field was poisoned deliberately. All the plants killed. Yes. So there was no good reason for anyone to oppose planning. Jack found all the cuttings in the Western Gazette. Quite a past, Mr Leslie Norman. Mm. But not a criminal one. I think he poisoned your garden. He mixed paraquat with Caliban 90, and everyone blamed the farmers. What's the blighter up to? <sighs> Trying to build something on his land, I suppose. He doesn't hang about, does he? Oh, Mr Norman. And we've got the first batch before they'd exchange contracts. But part of the woodland which was poisoned, where all the trees had died. That was the intended site for the staff bungalow, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Which you refused permission for finally uh, two months ago. Mm -hmm. It'll turn up again, probably disguised as a stable block. He ran that one through in Sussex. Well, that's a golden oldie. You see, stables, provided they're the required distance from the road, they don't obstruct anybody's view, they don't ruin the skyline, and they don't take anybody's light, you don't need planning permission for. 
or if you do, it's rarely refused by the end of the day. So, you build them in brick or stone, bide your time, and then you apply for permission to convert. Or if you're Mr. Leslie Norman, you convert and then apply for permission. You'd make a good developer. Father, thy chart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I'm afraid I can only spare you ten minutes. This won't take that long. It's just that I have another appointment. Do sit down. You'll have a drink? Uh, no, it's a little early for me, thanks. You're quite sure? I've just come from the council offices. Yes? You don't strike me as a man who enjoys wasting his time. I wasn't. I was looking at all your planning applications. Were you? Are we in the same line of business? I hadn't realised. I was looking at them to try and understand why anyone would deliberately try and poison an area of mature woodland. Is that what someone's done? Because if so, that's very reprehensible. That's what someone's done. Can they prove it? What this person has done is blatantly contravene the regulations controlling aerial crop spray and deliberately poisoned an area of woodland with lethal herbicide. Good Lord. Is that what happened to my woodland? Mr Norman, I've seen all your planning applications. I can't believe it. I can't believe that someone would deliberately poison an area of somebody else's woodland. People get up to all sorts of things, Mr Norman. I just can't believe it. And I'm well versed in these matters, as you probably know. But if I can't believe it, you know, I doubt if anyone else will either. Unless, of course, it can be proved quite categorically. On the 26th of last month, two cans of Caliban 90 and a quantity of Paraquat were delivered to Agricure Services on the instructions of a pilot working there, Mr. Ken Major. Agricure never used Paraquat. Really? Ken Major lived in Crowhurst, East Sussex, when he worked for you. 
Well, it's a small world, isn't it? And I employ an awful lot of people. Oh, you're not suggesting that this Len Major... Ken Major. Oh, that this Ken Major might perhaps have been nursing a grudge against me, and that he did it? Well, that's possible, I suppose. No, that's not what I'm saying. Anything's possible. Perhaps you need to speak to this fella. He's in the Middle East. Well, that rules him out then, doesn't it? Look, I've no wish to appear inhospitable, particularly to a neighbor. I know what you're up to, Mr. Norman. I doubt that, Mr. Bolt. I doubt that very much. Apart from the damage to the crops, don't you realize you're putting people's health at risk? Me? Mr. Bolt, if that's what you really think, shouldn't you be talking to a solicitor? I've got the proof. You'll need a good deal more than that. So save your breath. There's a good fellow. You'll just be wasting your time. Oh, just hang on. Good day, Mr. Bolt. What's the matter with it? Nothing. We're just not hungry. OK. What's the problem? Hilly Zal died. Hilly Zal? Oh, not Ozzy. No. The little one. The one that was sick. There weren't nothing I could do. It was poisoned. He had eaten something that had been poisoned. I don't believe it. I just don't believe that there's nothing anyone can do. People like Leslie Norman always get away with it. You lock it up. You shut up, will you, Doris, and go and call the police. Do you hear anything at all? Go and call the bloody police! I called in on Ted on the way home and apologised on both our behalfs. And I got Ted's lecture on how it wasn't the likes of them that were poisoning the countryside, but the likes of us. Yeah, buying up everything so the likes of them couldn't afford to live here anymore. I got it too, when I called to apologise at tea time. Homeward plods his weary way. That's it, Andrew.
How are you feeling? Much better. So am I. Well, so we should. They've stopped crop spraying. What are we doing here? We're meeting someone for dinner. Oh, Jack, you know how I hate surprises. Who? Sam Tyson. I told you he's the new editor of the Gazette. What I didn't tell you is that he's offered me a job. He wants me to take over the motoring column. Well, that doesn't sound such a terrible idea. It is to the bloke who's doing it at the moment. No, he doesn't need a, a new motoring correspondent. What he does need, what the paper hasn't got, surprisingly enough, for a country newspaper, is a sort of green column, an environmental watchdog. It's hardly your line of country, I'd have thought. No, but as I said to Sam on the phone, it might very well be yours. Mm.